This is probably about 8 o'clock in the morning. Everybody making their engines look as, as tidy as they can for the special occasion. That's the Fowler coat of arms. That's Evening Star. This is a showman's engine owned by Mike Priestner. It's a Burrell single crank compound. Of John Pennington, a farmer from Dunham Massey. It's a very sad occasion this of course and everybody's uh, well the ones that were within reach of bringing their engine have uh, very kindly made the effort at least one engine had been put away for the winter boiler drained and uh, firebox greased up and everything and he still made the effort to uh, bring it along and steam it up today much appreciated of course Floral tributes. This is the wall just outside his house. All this activity is taking place just outside, outside his house. Of course. There's the old trusty Land Rover, which has been off the road, I believe, for a few weeks, wanting some uh, major work. But uh, we couldn't leave it out on this occasion. So it was. Uh, just being coupled up behind the living van there. That was my transport to and from home while I, during the five happy years I spent with Fred. He'd no use for it of an evening. He said, you might as well take it. And it was uh, backed outside our house for most of the time during the five years. That's his air bar that he used when he put it behind his roller or behind his living van. More polishing. There's John Pennington, farmer from Dunham Massey. Oh, making a little bit of a special effort. There were four visiting engines in total, one from as far away as Nottingham. Not this one, so be it. Jeff Lamb from Nottingham. Engine owner for many years and met up with Fred at rallies from time to time. They've all come on low orders, of course. The shed's not on fire there, it's just uh, steaming up the roller. The tractor is in one side of the shed and the, the roller is where it's always been. The roller has a ventilator above it so that most of the smoke from the chimney can get straight out through the roof, but that doesn't occur in the case of the tractor, that's why that the tractor's filling the shed with smoke. You can see the line shaft in there. There's the showman's engine, Mike Priestner's. He's not had that long, he's only had it about, uh, about two years. Showman's engines welcome a run on the road now and again, of course, because they, uh, being such big machines, they're, they're nearly always moved from rally to rally on a low loader. Just a few of them get an occasional road run. It's 
Pitched out. They get very busy on Radcliffe Road there. They don't uh, usually park cars, but uh, I think they've been kept away on this particular day. The police were informed, of course, that all this activity would be going on, so they've uh, kept the road entirely free for us as the low loaders are parked up further down. Ah, now this is the trailer that's going to carry Fred's coffin. It's been brought up from Worthing behind the Land Rover by Michael Weber, a young chap who used to see a great deal of Fred when he lived in Bolton, but he moved down south and now runs his own little engineering firm. He's decorated it all and he's done an absolutely wonderful job. He's got all the bits and pieces of Fred's profession. There's his boson's chair and the, the hammer and chisel and some dogs on the other side, that's it. They were used for driving into the chimney to tie the ladders to. A couple of ladders there with his name. All preferred. Spent many hours preparing that trailer and done a wonderful job. We're all indebted to him. And there's Betsy, finally in steam. Being driven out carefully up the about a one in eight slope from his uh, back garden, it's at low level, out through the gate onto the road. That's me in the white overalls. I'm actually driving the roller. One of Fred's last requests when he was making his own arrangements, uh, he did ask the, the main organiser uh, if he'd get me to drive the roller. Because believe it or not, over the years, very, very few people were ever privileged to drive his roller. He needed a steersman, of course, and a few of his friends have helped him out steering. But uh, he knew I was a regular traction engine driver, of course, so he, uh, he paid me the honour of asking would I drive Betsy on its uh, on his final journey, which obviously I was very, very delighted to be asked. And, uh, couldn't refuse, obviously. We were expecting a little, possibly a little bit of trouble with the roller because it had sprung a, a tube leak some time previously. But the boiler inspector had had a look at it and he had given it clearance. He said it'll be all right. And in fact it was, it, uh, it didn't let us down. The living van will be going behind the roller with his name on of course. The living van has, has been recently restored, ready for his uh, nationwide tour behind his tractor and there's his tractor. 27 years work from virtually a pile of scrap through to the fine machine you see today. Ah, there's one of Fred's mining friends, probably a retired miner, I can't put a name to him but uh, I have a feeling that he's one of the chaps that may well have helped him out during his, uh, the digging of his coal mine in his back garden controversial coal mine which all the neighbours thought was going to cause their houses to disappear nothing of the sort just coupling up the land over there to behind the living van police did an excellent job for us this day the procession had no trouble at all going exactly where we wanted to go it was all planned beforehand of course and the police did an excellent job. They carried messages for us and they cleared the way and they gave us an escort wherever we needed it. There's the Rolls Royce, the vehicle of style that's brought him from the Chapel of the Rest. And now be transferred onto the flat wagon.
That's another of his mining friends. Ex miner runs a club at West Harton now. In the miners club. Now just notice how easy that coffin slides along those ladders. That's because they've all been fitted up with rollers just for the purpose to receive it. That's Michael Weber just climbing up now to tie it down. That's the lad that's gone to all the trouble of preparing the wagon and bringing it 270 miles behind a Land Rover. His Land Rover that is. Done an excellent job Michael. And that's the Elephant and Castle which forms a major part of Bolton's coat of arms of course. That's why that's there. Just to uh, remind everybody that uh, Fred was a genuine son of Bolton, just in case they'd forgotten, which I'm sure they hadn't. This is the band, a, T, a local TA band of the Royal Artillery, who uh, volunteered for the occasion. They led the procession. Time's getting short now, so getting close to the time to move off. time all throughout by the way there were no delays there's Betsy a good head of steam uh, steering on this uh, this occasion is Roger Murray one of the main organizers of all this uh, he's done a lot of work friend of Fred's of many many years steam engine man doesn't own one at present but has, has done in the past and they've always kept kept in touch with one another and uh, he readily stepped in and uh, undertook a, a lot of this organisation. Done an excellent job. And Jack, Brad's eldest lad from the Isle of Man, was steering the, the tractor along with Michael Weber. I visited Fred on, uh, on two or three occasions during his uh, last few weeks at the hospital and at the hospice uh, where incidentally they looked after him very very well, he was very comfortable uh, and he did, uh, Roger Murray and Michael uh, visited him on a number of occasions and uh, that's where he, he expressed most of his wishes. He wanted a good Victorian funeral, he said. And by Jove, that's what he got. Without a shadow of a doubt. You know, you can the weather wasn't too brilliant light rain uh, for most of the day but uh, as you'll see it didn't deter people from uh, coming to pay their last respects. Okay. 
we were expecting a lot of people to, to turn out, but uh, when we saw the, the weather, we thought that might have reduced the numbers slightly, but it certainly didn't. Everybody who decided to come took no notice of the bad weather, and they all turned out, as you'll see when we get to the church. Now, the order of the procession was that uh, the band, followed by the roller, towing the living van and Land Rover, followed by his tractor. Twenty-seven years' work, just finally completed, just in time driven by Michael Webber and Jack, his eldest son. Roger, the youngest lad, was with, 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 with me on the roller. Followed by uh, his wife and her immediate family in the rolls. And uh, Fred's three daughters, who also kept in close contact with him during his... Uh, his uh, hospital stay. They were in the cars and then there's the four visiting engines. A sad day for us all of course but uh, I'm sure Jack there would have, would have felt it more than most but very very luckily uh, driving the engine and looking after the engine and preparing the engine of course at least it took his mind off things for a while. He'd driven it quite a bit. I think the first time it ever ventured up that slope, when Fred finally completed it and got it steam worthy, uh, Jack came over for the occasion. I think he was with him the first time it put its wheels on the road. And even though he lives in the Isle of Man, he came over at every opportunity. So he followed the... Uh, and he came over quite a few times during Fred's recent uh, countrywide tour. Now this is just outside the church and just look at the crowds there. Now I don't know whether you've ever been to a funeral where the, where the crowds uh, appreciate the preparation by applauding but that's what happened there. It was quite overwhelming, really. The whole of Bolton turned out. And the applause was uh, their way of appreciating the preparation work which had got into it. church I believe holds about 550 and it was uh, full to standing. The one of the undertaker's jobs had to uh, make sure that the church was occupied by people with a perfectly legitimate reason to be there. And the rest were quite happy to stand in the rain outside. I wouldn't mind betting that this is the, the biggest funeral that that undertaker's ever done and ever likely to do.
Only had a few, like ten minutes, but he showed me his mine shaft. Oh, yeah. Showed me around his back garden, and do you know something like a kid's dream? It was like, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, oh, you know what's sand all pit? this here? Yeah. You know that sand pit? There's a sand pit down there. Yeah, down at bottom, yeah. And you know coping stones off a chimney. Yeah. Well, that's what well I remember on. another one that's when we watched him drop a chimney. You remember Morrison's up Charlie oh, Hill Road? Yeah. Now I've been told it weren't him lately, but I don't I know it was. And he burned it and chimney whoom and all he did were run away. Onk onk with oh. you know with like a, a thing yeah. on him, onk oh. onk. And he were legging it and chimney were going down and he yeah. were he were off. He yeah. were gone. He were he were yeah. laughing his head off. As though it were a laugh, but yeah. Sorry, I couldn't do that. I'm telling you that. Fred, I'm a brilliant guy. Like to watch him on TV. He was down to earth. Not on many celebrities. He was an ordinary man that ordinary people could relate to. And I'm going to miss him dearly. Thank you. What do you think of the funeral today? Do you think it's really got Bolton people out? It's got a lot of people out. Not only from Bolton, from Liverpool, from even across the world. There are a few people here. And it just shows the strength that he was regarded. He's really a nice, really like nice guy. He was liked, loved, down to earth. Did you meet him yourself? No, I didn't. But I feel what I have now. I've been here today. I've enjoyed the spirit of the people here, and he really has touched my heart. And yes, I did have a cry. Thank you very much. Very, very upsetting. Uh, glad that we've missed him. He's a good man. You know what I mean? Everyone will miss him. Did you ever meet him yourself? Yeah, I've met him myself, yeah. Good and how chap. did you find him? Very good good gentleman, yeah. And with Roy, you, you knew Fred, didn't you, Roy? Yeah, we all knew Fred. <laughs> good morning. What are your thoughts today? Sad ones. Very sad ones. Very sad ones. And years and years ago, you used to go down there and do a bit of filming on his yard and stuff like that, didn't you? Yeah, I think it was 25 years ago when I was down filming when we was doing the roller up at that time for, for the Wigan uh, Corporation and uh, reboilering it and filmed it coming up out of the yard a few times and going out on its first uh, road run and trials yeah it's a very sad day indeed How Sadness. will you remember Fred? Well he was always very jolly, jovial he liked talking to everybody Gave everybody the information. Once you got to to know him, he was a, a really nice guy. There's the book of condolence, which had many many signatures on. I'll remember him, Fred, as a a cheerful chap who was always prepared to speak to him. Sadly missed, with Fred. There's Barry Neweth, one of the chaps who gave him one of his very early steeplejacking jobs. The vicar of uh, Radcliffe at the time, and he be later became vicar of Kirby Mallam in Yorkshire, and he christened the two lads at Kirby Mallam. And we repaired his church tower, Fred, and that was during the time I was with Fred. He repointed his church tower and I painted the gutters and downspouts. While we were there, we were there for two or three weeks. Stayed in lodgings up there, Monday to Friday. Poor Jack, feeling it just a bit more than most, I'm sure. Shared a lot of common interest with his dad. He's gone in for engineering. So he's got to be inherited a lot of his dad's interests. He's now with the Isle of Man Railways. Steam Railways, of course. This really is the day that, uh, that brought Bolton to a complete standstill. 
There was no work done in Bolton between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock that day. They all turned out, stood everywhere they could, just looking up church gate towards the church from the from Bradshaw Gate. Patiently waiting. There we are, a cloud of steam in the background indicating that we've finally set off. There's a parade right round the periphery of the town now, terminating at the Tong Cemetery. People used to ask Fred, have you ever fallen off? Have you ever fallen off, he used to say. You only fall off this job once and it's half a day with the undertaker, a phrase he used many, many times. It's a great pity that there was no camera up by the fire station because the route took us past the fire station and all the duty firemen lined up and stood to attention in a long line right across the front of the fire station with the four fire engines deliberately brought out with all the lights on uh, and saluted us as we went past. It was a fine sight and it's just a pity that there wasn't a camera there to pick it up but it was certainly much appreciated by, uh, by the travellers in the, in the party. Traffic lights were ignored, of course, we had a policeman in front of us and uh, he warned of everybody at the junction that uh, we were on our way and they all just stopped. There were no problems with the traffic. Here we have the people of Bolton, they're well satisfied with what they've seen. They made the effort to come out on a miserable day, as evident by all the umbrellas. And, uh, they're now making their way back to work or back home, as the case may be. They've all made the special effort. That's very, very nice to see. Presumably mostly Boltonians, who felt that they knew Fred like a friend, even though they'd possibly never met him, a lot of them, but just because of his popularity on television, and I mean popularity, I don't mean popularity in the way that a, a pop singer might be, they, everybody felt that Fred was a genuine character, and by Jove he was, anybody that made the effort to come and have a look round his place, the man they spoke to in his yard was exactly the same man that they saw on television, there was absolutely no difference, he didn't have what they call an image, Fred was Fred, whether he was on television or chatting to somebody in his yard, it was just the same. Nice to see Jack driving there rather than steering. Eminently capable.
the vicar of Bolton on the left and Fred's friend, the vicar from Kirby Mallam. And here we have Fred approaching his final resting place to be saluted in the way that he would have wished which is not unique for a steam man but at least it's extremely appropriate a long blast on the whistles of the attending engines Well that just about sums up a, a unique day, uh, a good friend of mine Fred, as I say I met him first about 1965-66 and enjoyed five happy years working with him from 89 to 94 and uh, he'll be missed by everybody in Bolton and far more besides he came over on the television as though everybody felt they knew him and uh, he had a great following and he will certainly be sadly missed by me and many many others